We are here with Ring of Honor play-by-play -play announcer Kevin Kelly, and we are getting set for Border Wars coming up in Toronto Saturday, May the 4th, and then television tapings the very next day, May the 5th, at Ted Reeve Arena. Uh, those kind of weekends for you, Kevin. Uh, how do you have the voice by Monday? <laughs> well, I won't have much of a voice by the end of, uh, you know, Sunday's action, but it's a good way to lose your voice because being able to call you know, a great pay-per-view the night before, and then to bring television to the great fans of the Toronto area. I mean, it just, it's fantastic. We're really excited about it. You know, it when we were there last year and we got to do that great fan contest, we had so much fun. It was such a great time. You've been such a great partner for us, and we really appreciated, you know, working together with you guys, and it, it's been really great. And the fans uh, in Toronto are second to none. We, you know, we travel all over the place. But Toronto has always been just a great city for Ring of Honor. We can't wait to get back. What, what is it so much of, about Toronto? Is it something like much like a, a New York or a Houston or Chicago that have those those long traditional roots that really uh, transcend generations? I think for a lot, where wrestling is just it's very popular, and Ring of Honor has been a product that the, the fan base in Toronto has responded in kind with since it's been coming up since 2008. Well, you look at what Toronto is in terms of a historic wrestling city, and uh, the fact that Toronto fans have embraced Ring of Honor means a lot to us because we have, you know, when you go to cities that have a rich wrestling history, you know, it, there's almost a reverence to it. And that's how we feel about Toronto. Um, Toronto has always been a great town for us. And that's why when we were able to do not only Border Wars, but then television afterward, it's kind of like giving back. And we want to make sure that all the fans have the opportunity to come see it and be part of television uh, and be part of the pay-per-view broadcast. So it, it works out perfectly. Now, in your line of work, I mean, chemistry is so key. And uh, I think you and Nigel McGuinness had really uh, struck a great chemistry. Uh, since the last time we've talked to you, Caleb Seltzer has now come into that role. Tell us a bit about that transition and uh, working with Caleb. Well, I think, um, you know, working with Nigel, as I had, we did develop great chemistry. Of course, Nigel's duties as matchmaker, it's impossible to wear both hats. Uh, so he had to step away from the microphone. Caleb's been an excellent fill-in. He's not the permanent solution. Uh, you know, he's somebody that I tabbed a couple of years ago as someone who eventually can take my seat and take a, take my chair when I decide I want to retire. Um, so that's why he and I have been working together. And then at the same time, oh, well, now that Nigel stepped away, all right, kid, you're in the seat. So here we go. I think he's done a fine job. Uh, you know, again, when you're 21 years old and to have this kind of experience on your resume, I think it's going to be very good for his future career. Tell us, you know, the, the day of an, an eye pay-per-view, kind of, do, do you kind of just go into it, uh, you know, is there any special preparation that, that you have, especially going into a weekend like we have in May, where you have pretty much eight hours of commentary ahead of you. How do you kind of approach that beast? I have to try to simplify it as much as possible. Um, what is the reason for the match being in the ring? What is that story? What is the audience going to want to hear from me? And what I've uh, done over time is, you know, in addition to just sort of being the guide of the of the audience, trying to step away and let the crowd be that extra man in the ring. Uh, because so many times in Ring of Honor, the crowd plays a role in how a match is perceived, how the match is conducted, and having that audience participation makes my job as an announcer easier. It makes the job for the wrestlers easier. Uh, and, and it makes it so exciting for me. So I try to lay out as much as possible. You know, let the crowd tell the story, and what am I going to do? Restate the obvious? So I try to avoid doing that, you know, and really just get into the heads of the athletes. Like, what are you thinking? What's, you know, what are you going to think about if this type of match happens? So um, I try to get their, their mindset going in, if there's any physical ailments that they're dealing with, and how that might relate to the story that ha unfolds in the ring. It's interesting how you describe that, and you mentioned mention kind of mentoring Caleb. Was Jim Ross kind of that mentoring figure for you? Well, he became that kind of mentoring figure. Uh, you know, at first we were peers, and um, you know, I think uh, I don't know if I was ready to embrace uh, Jim Ross as a mentor. Okay. But when I got along and I started to realize that I needed to ask more questions and I didn't know everything, uh, that I started to lean on Jr. more and started to rely on him for his expertise. When you're young and you're put into that spot, you think you know more than you really do. Uh, and I had a great guide post with Jim Ross who made me a much better announcer. There are things that I do, not just in wrestling, but in my day-to-day -day life that I learned directly from Jim Ross about ways to conduct yourself as a professional, way to handle your business, way to approach people. And, uh, you know, I'm better for the experience of having worked with him.
I don't know how much uh, you can add to this, and we, we won't get into any details, but is there any update uh, regarding Charlie Haas? Have you spoken to him recently? Uh, because that was a very strange story uh, coming out of a, uh, recently. Yeah, it was, and I haven't spoken to him. Uh, and again, the story is he retired. Uh, it, that's what it boiled down to. Um, I'm disappointed from the way it ended. I think that it won't be now. Uh, it may be years down the road. I wonder if Charlie will look back at the way he stepped away from Ring of Honor and will have any regret. Uh, because I think that an athlete of his stature with his you know, resume could have written his own ticket any way he wanted to go out. Instead, he kind of went out the way that he did, which is what it is. Um, and it's a decision that he made, and he'll have to live with it. Ring of Honor moves on, you know, re regardless. If you don't want to be there, you don't have to be there. Final question as we end off here, Kevin. It seems that Ring of Honor right now, with a lot of the, the different storylines that are progressing right now, tell us a little bit about the feel right now in the locker room. Uh, the locker room, very competitive atmosphere. Uh, guys are very hungry. They know there is a growing fan base added to the one that was already uh, terrific. And so many new fans are coming on board because of TV that uh, the creative juices are really flowing with a lot of guys right now, and I think the best is yet to come for Ring of Honor. Well, they are going to be coming up to Toronto Saturday, May the 4th for Border Wars, and then television tapings the very next day, all happening at the Ted Reeve Arena. You can go to ROHWrestling.com to order the event and get more information. Plenty of guests coming up on Live Audio Wrestling and your chance to win some tickets to both of those live events. We look forward to seeing you in Toronto, Kevin. Can't wait, John. Thank you.